Okay, now that we've gone ahead and we've gone through some of the basics, what the, the default files do within uh, your new RubyMotion application, let's go ahead and create a, a new view controller where we can start to manipulate the way things look within the actual application itself. So as you can see, uh, I'm in the app delegate. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're just gonna comment out the root view controller here. And we're gonna take out the root view controller uh, a variable here we're going to pass in a different controller so what we're going to do is we're going to pass in a main view controller and we're going to set this to new now you can also use allocate dot init but i'm just going to go ahead and use a new here i like the ruby convention and i'm just leaving this here because we're going to come back to this in a second okay so what i'll do is i'll open up my sidebar here i'm going to create a new file and then place that into my controllers a directory so I'm gonna create a new controllers directory this is gonna be my main view controller dot RB I'll go ahead and I'll create that then I'll jump into it and this is gonna inherit from the uh, UI con view I view controller so UI view controller and what that's gonna do is it's it's gonna give us some options here the UI view controller is the same thing that that root view controller uh, was started with so when you allocated that initial memory for the the review controller here when you first started uh, You allowed it to go ahead and give it some properties in here So the view controller again sits within the navigation controller which sits in the root view controller for the window So same thing here. We're passing in the main view controller instead of the root view controller We're going ahead and we're initializing that here and then we're passing that navigation controller still through that root view controller. That's going to allow us to go ahead and change a couple of things and, and really scale our application here. So the first couple of things you want to kind of remember or take note of is that we're going to create a view did load and a view um, an on the load view here. Now where am I getting these from? Let me go ahead and close that out. Where am I getting this from? Well, if we take a look at the UI view controller here, so UI view controller, we'll see that, um, and I do recommend reading up on this a little bit to get familiar with it. We'll see some options here. Uh, you should see uh, view did load and the load view. So that's where I'm getting these, these uh, actions from. So the view did load, it's called after the view is loaded into memory. So it's called once after that. And this is where I, you would set yourself that title so that it's loaded once. And I'm just going to put main controller here as the title so we can see that as an example. And then the load view is where um, I've learned and I'd recommend you putting where your, your application logic for when the, the view has loaded. So we'll take a look at that. This creates the view that the controller manages. So that's where you would want to create um, your, your sub views of the view controller. So first things first, we're going to create a view for this view controller and we're going to set that to UI view. And of course it's going to be a new UI view. Let's take a look at that real quick. So UI view, it defines a rectangular area on the screen. So this view is going to be this view right here. Um, so what we'll do is now we can manipulate that view. Actually, let's go ahead and load this real quick. So this is, again, the title we're passing through here. So same thing, title, title. Uh, we haven't set the background color. I want to show you what that looks like if we don't set it. And we'll exit out of there. We'll rake. And then it'll go ahead and rebuild that for us. And it'll show you that we're not getting the, the UI color white color for the background because we haven't set that. And we're just getting a black background here and we're still getting that navigation bar now with our new title main controller and again a black background so what we'll do is we need to set a background color background color to a ui color i'm going to set that back to the white color here i'll save that and you'll notice that this right here is calling upon the view so you need to assign the background color to the view you can't just go uh, background color just like that uh, it's going to try to put that onto the view controller which isn't necessarily able to handle that so what we can also do is I believe using the repel 
uh, we could go ahead and um, let's focus on this right here. So if you focus on your simulator, you'll see the main changing right here in your terminal, and you're seeing a red kind of border around this this UI view. If I click on that, it'll select the UI view here, and that is the UI view that we created within our load view. Pretty cool, right? So now what we can do is we can actually work with this UI view. So because we have selected the UI view, we can just use self dot background color equals UI color dot white color. And as you can see, it changed that in real time for us. So we can go ahead and we can manipulate the UI views within um, within our terminal while we're running the simulator. So that's pretty awesome. This, this allows us to go ahead and work with um, the UI view in real time, and then we can transfer that information over to our code itself. So we have that working. We don't need to rebuild. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on with this. And what we'll do is we'll start off by creating, let's say a button in the screen. And so what we'll do is we'll create a button and we'll create a UI button and this will be new. So the way you know how to do this is if you look up in the iOS documentation, you look for button and you search for a class. So we're looking for a class of UI button and this allows you to instantiate a new button um, and you can set some properties on it. So this button, now that's been created, we can actually create this here as well. So we've created a new UI button. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the button and we're gonna set a title to it. I believe that's what the method is for that. So we got a set title for state, right? So I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna put this as a comment so you can see how this gets translated over to Ruby. So we got a button and we're gonna set the title and it needs to have a title and it's gonna be a string. So in Ruby, you just start a string with the quotes. This will be the button title. And what we'll do is, the next thing here is you'll notice a space here. In, in Ruby, that translates over to a comma. And we're gonna take this for state, for state. And I just want it to be on like a normal state. Let me remove the sidebar. Normal state, so we go to UI control state. UI control state normal, and let's just paste that into there. Great, so that should title it for us. Now we need to set a frame for it. So if we look up frame in here, it's gonna give us a, a rectangle. So we have to work with, with that. Let me see if I can find a little more information on this for you guys. Uh, all right, so let's try UI button frame. And all right, so let me just explain this to you real quick. So the frame allows you to go ahead and kind of specify where it is on the X and Y axis and how large, how, how wide and how tall the, the button is. So it's going to allow you to manipulate the triangle uh, for this or the rectangle, sorry, for this view. And this is what it looks like. So we got the, the array of arrays. It's going to have your X and Y and then it's gonna have your width and your height, and these need to be numeric values. So I'll just comment this out, that way you have a reference here, and then I'll take the button frame equals UI frame. So I'm just gonna say it's gonna be 20 to the right, and let's say 200 down so that it'll be visible, or clearly visible for us. And let's just make this about 250 wide and 30 tall, 30 pixels tall. And then let's let's go ahead and add this to our view. So it needs to be added on as a sub view to our view and it needs to be a button. All right, so we're passing that button view into our view as a sub view. So it's like a stack, right? So we have our view, our UI view, or no, our UI view controller, and then we have sitting on top of that the UI view, and then sitting on top of the UI view will be our new sub view, which will be the button. Okay, so I hope that makes sense in terms of stacking. So you're stacking, think of stacking boxes. 
The first box on the bottom will be the UI view controller, the second box will be the UI view, and the box at the top will be that, that sub view of the button. And so that will be the most visible to you. It'll stand out for you. And so let's go ahead and, and, and set this within our REPL here. And oh, let's pull this back up and let's actually work with this here. All right, so let's make sure the button is still there. So button, we still got the UI button. Okay, right, so let's set the title for that button. Set title and it will be button title for state and this will be UI control state normal. Okay. Uh, so that doesn't seem to be passing through. Sometime con sometimes constants can't pass through and I've learned this recently. So we'll need to just rebuild this real quick. Right, and then we should see the button in there. Let's see, let's see. Okay, so why isn't our button showing? Well, it hasn't crashed, meaning that we haven't done anything wrong that we know of. Um, I think what needs to happen is we need to set a color for the title. So let's go ahead and look into that. So we've got set title color. Okay, so we need to go ahead and make sure that we set the color of the title because I believe by default it's just going to be white. Um, and let's let's test that out by removing the background color. Um, and let's actually use the REPL to do that. Let's see. If we select the view and we set the self dot background color equals UI color dot black color. Yeah, okay, so we can see that by default the button is the button color is is white. So let's go ahead and let's get that white color back. But what we'll do is we will set the button color. So set title color and it's gonna be the same thing, UI color. So UI color, let's make it red color so it's visible. And then for state, and for the state, we're gonna use the same UI normal. All right, and let's, let's see if this works. So we're gonna exit and we're gonna rebuild that. And it should give us that white background color and you should see the visible button. All right, cool. So you'll notice if I, if I try to tap on it, I'm trying to tap on it right now, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but it's not, it's not giving us anything because we haven't set an action to this button. And before I do that, let's go ahead and let's duplicate this line. So I'm gonna duplicate this line and change this state to highlighted so we can show that it changes. So we'll change that to highlighted. We'll go back and the button title button. Um, I'm just gonna make it really visible. So you are pressing me. And <laughs> let's exit rake and let's, let's see this in action. All right, so if we go ahead and, and press it, it changes to you are pressing me. So that just kind of shows you that different states have different settings. So you can go ahead and, and mess with your buttons that way. And you definitely want to take a look at the button documentation here. Just kind of read through the docs here and it'll allow you to go ahead and, and really understand what's going on with the buttons. So all in all, this is getting started with a main view controller and, and starting to add your UI views uh, or, or your, your sub views to your, your view controller. And in the next episode, we'll actually, we'll move this out of the UI view controller. That way it's just a controller and we'll move it into a UI view of its own. So what we'll do is uh, we'll see you in the next video.